What's up guys, it's Joe Coach Jenkins here and today we're here to play The Letter. <laughs> Fuck, come on. Jeez. The Ermengarde Mansion. It was built for Lord William and Lady Elizabeth Ermengarde of Luxbourne. Humble ambassadors of peace and beloved by the people. Both were well known for their compassion and generosity, never failing to extend a helping hand to anyone in need. Under the influence and wealth, what was once a small, sleepy village grew to a prosperous and bustling town. However, the seasons of joy eventually ended when the good no nobles perished at the hands of a great plague. Their riches and legacies were henceforth passed on to their only child, Lady Charlotte M Ermengarde. The mansion has stood since the 1620s, a witness to a very long history of joy and pain. After Lady Charlotte had committed suicide, the great house was eventually left uninhabited. And that is when it began. Surrounding villagers spoke of seeing and hearing unearthly things of cries and howls that filled the nights, and hear say of a mysterious woman roaming the hollowed halls aimless. People who dared entered, entered his walls were simply never heard from again. Even after 400 years, these stories remain, much like the house itself. Whispers about the once great house, its legend and its curse still fall, up, fall upon the villagers' ears. In spite of this, the current owners are convinced that these stories are nothing more than a hoax. With little regard for the truth, they had Briar Bealty Corporation place the property back on sale. Like Pandora's box, the secrets that lie inside await to be discovered by brave souls. No matter what happens, take care not to be consumed by the curse. Good luck. Isabella. Hello? Isabella? Are you there? Where are you? A familiar jittery voice comes from the other oh, end. Oh, hey Rose! I'm at St. Goretti High. What's the matter? What do you mean, what's the matter? It's a mansion, silly. I'm here and you're late. Jeez, we're on shift together. You promised. Oh my god, please don't tell me you forgot. You were planning on leaving me to check this place out on my own, weren't you? You chickened out! Calm down. You know I take my promises seriously. I'd like to believe that, so hurry up and get here. This place is huge. A bit too quiet since no one's lived here since, like, forever, but beautiful nonetheless. Why are you so surprised? This isn't the first time you've been there. I know, I just wish I could live in a place like this. It really takes my breath away. Yeah, well, I wouldn't be so sure about that. Not after the rumors that say it's haunted. Jeez, never mind those rumors. Ghosts aren't real after all. And even I'm if they are, which that, they yeah. are not, they can't do anything. They're nothing but spirits. You don't know that. They might be listening or watching right now, and they might not be happy with you enough to curse you. No offense, sweetie, but that's a bit of a stretch. Uh, believe it or not, it's better to be careful. Right. You know, not cool. every property we sell will end up with a dead body stuffed in a sofa. And I think that mansion is where we'll likely find another one. I can feel it. That was one time, Isabella! Loosen up! <laughs> Wait, just get here ASAP, please. I'm getting bored being here on my own. Fine, fine. Let me just finish up here. I'll be right there soon. Okay, see you. Bye! Oh, she hangs up before I can respond. Rose, still charming Who as ever. Who is that? I look after my phone to see Rebecca, Becca, giving me a questioning look. Oh, that? It's just Rose. Rose? The one you said who trained you for your Jealous job back friends. when you started? Jealous friends? Yes, that You're one. working together again? Just for this property. We've been scoping out that big mansion down Anselm Village after the renovations. Today is sort of its grand opening to the public. The RC wants to give it one last check before we let potential buyers tour it this afternoon. Wait, mansion? That big spooky one you've been telling everyone about? 
Didn't you keep saying how it just gave you the creeps? You actually went there? And you're going back? Well, I did promise Rose I wouldn't ditch her. And besides, a job is a job. Gotta do what you gotta do to make a living. <laughs> as soon as those words leave my mouth, Becca lets out a soft chuckle. What's so funny? Nothing. It's just that I didn't expect you to say that. Coming from you, it sounds so out of character. I wonder why. I mean, no offense, but you've been freaking out about the place being creepy ever since you got assigned to it. Cursed rumors and all. Yeah, I honestly thought you'd back out. Not all the time. I could really use a huge amount of cash right now, and this is just the fastest way to get it. It's not worth it. Plus, listen to this. Briar Realty wants it sold as soon as possible, and the agent who lands the deal is going to get a huge bonus! They never give bonuses like that. Getting that would make life so much easier. They're desperate, I'm desperate, it's perfect. The voice acting's also pretty good. Sympathetic look crosses her face. You know, if you're really in urgent need of money, you could have just asked me. Or Ashton. We can always let you borrow, and you can pay us back whenever. I have to keep myself from groaning out loud. In the years I've known her, I can really tell what to expect once she has that expression. Becca! I've noticed that you've been living off instant noodles these past few weeks. Uh... <laughs> she crosses her arms and grimaces at the thought. Her voice slightly rises as she begins to scold me. Instantly, I'm reminded why Becca excels at teaching boisterous teenagers. Stop eating junk! They're cheap, but they're not good for you. You'll definitely end up in the hospital if you keep at it. We can't afford to go to the hospital. I'll eat at a party. Hey! I eat other things too! I fold my arms across my chest, mimicking her position, giving her the best frown I can muster. The same one I'd use my youngest use with my younger siblings when I'm when they're being difficult. Instead, she only raises an eyebrow at me. That's not going to work on me. And I saw it when you were cleaning your flat last week. I'm the instant the noodle cups outnumber everything else. I only say, I'm trying to, because I was saying about the butterfly effect, so basically if you make enemies, you don't really want to make enemies because it will somehow affect you, but even if you do make friends, sometimes that can also be a negative effect, so yeah, I'm just going with my own discretion. You're here. just exaggerating. Did you even see what's in my cupboard yet? I'm not just living on instant noodles alone. I've got canned beans, peas, tuna, ham, and even hamburgers in there. I've even got hamburgers. <laughs> Becca's wrinkling her nose by the time I get to the end of the small list. She even went a little green on the on the last one. I would have laughed a little at that if if I didn't know it would only lead to more reprimands from her. Aren't those the same ones you won from the grocer's raffle more than a year ago? Oh, I sincerely hope you're checking the date stamps on those things before eating them. I don't want a repeat of last year. In any case, those are still not exactly healthier choices, Belle. She shakes her head, possibly laughing at some funny, distant memory. And she looks up, I immediately embrace myself. More words from her. Sometimes, it's just better to let Beta talk until she's out of things to say. But when she turns her attention back to me, there is only warmth in her smile. <sighs> what am I going to do with you? She says this more to herself than me, her voice shifting to something kinder, even motherly, if I'm looking for the exact word. I hope you know that it's impossible not to worry about you when you're like this. You don't have to keep eating the same thing. I already told you before, you're always free to reheat food in my fridge. <laughs> Thanks, Becca. I really appreciate it, but you don't need to keep babying me. You've been taking care of me since after I moved here. You have to take a break sometime. And before you ask again, no. You know I'm not a fan of borrowing money. And I'm not going to ask you to give me what you earned hard for yourself. Ugh, you and your pride. But suit yourself. The offer stays on the table, though. I nod in response, if only to get her to drop the topic. But I'm pretty certain I will never take that offer. Ever. It has nothing to do with pride. 
I've simply seen plenty of times how friendships can take a turn for the worse just because of a few unpaid debts. I don't want something like that between me and Becca. We may argue about small, petty things, but she really feels like a real sister to me. I don't want to lose that friendship over something so trivial. Becca's movements when she takes a quick glance at something behind me snaps me out of my well, thoughts. Enough chit chat. Lunch is ending, and my students will be back any minute. We can catch up later. Good luck with your clients. You better treat us to lunch or something if you get that sale. You bet! With a small smile, she returns to her desk and begins shifting to the pages of a rather thick history book. She's probably working on next week's lessons plan. Or trying, at least. Her eyes are distant. She doesn't seem to, too attentive to whatever is on the page. <coughs> As if she heard my thoughts, Becca starts coughing heavily. Her hand hastily goes to her mouth to stifle the sounds. After that's precisely why I followed her here. For someone who makes a habit out of worrying about other people, Becca sure forgets how to take care of herself. Hey, you sure you can manage on your own? I mean, you're still a bit feverish. Ah, oh, hush, dear. Don't you worry about me. She sounds terrible suddenly. I'll just drink some medicine and I'll be right as rain. I level her with a flat look. She had, she has had a cold for a couple of days now. Something about the strange weather not agreeing with her lately. And despite my advice to take the week off and rest, I have found her apartment empty when I dropped by this morning. She even left the medicine with her doctor prescribed. Look who's being stubborn now. You shouldn't even be working right now. <laughs> Seriously, you big baby. I'll be fine. For now, just go to work and stop making that rose girl wait for you. I'll call you if I still feel bad, and you can come pick me up if it makes you feel any better. She offers me a reassuring smile, and I can only sigh. Why do I even bother? There is no stopping her once she has decided on something. Defeated, I reach inside my bag to pull out some of the same bottle of medicine she left earlier. She looks at it wearingly when I place it in front of her. Unfortunately for her, this is the one thing I'm not letting her have her way. Alright, but don't forget what the doctor said. Drink this on time. I'll see you later, okay? There's an amused gleam in her eyes when she shifts them back to me. <laughs> Look who's playing the mother hen now. Rebecca! <laughs> They're blushing. <laughs> okay, okay. I won't tease anymore. It's true though, they both. They both I'll make sure to drink it, Mom. Before I can retort, she casts another look at the clock. I take that as a sign to finally end the conversation and my short visit. With a small wave, I leave her alone to her classroom and her thoughts. Okay guys, I think... That was enough for one day. I hope you're enjoying this new type of... It's called a visual novel or something? A VN or something like that. Uh, it's just something different and it's a horror based novel, visually novel. <laughs> okay, I might have butchered that, but yeah, you get the idea. It's it's gonna be something like this. I'm not sure exactly, I haven't played it. I'm doing it with you guys. So it's like reading a book, but visually, as far as I know, which is a bit cool. You get you get the the, the vision of what the, the writer was going for in the first place, you know? Sometimes we imagine things that might be slightly different to what they, they meant when they wrote the novel itself, so yeah. Hope you guys are enjoying this. Uh, be sure to hit the like button down below and share with a couple of friends if you think they'll like this type of video because I know this is quite different to the conventional horror I play. This is not really playing, this is more reading. I hope my voice is good for that. <laughs> so, I'll see you guys in the next video. What are you waiting for? Subscribe button's right there. Just click it. <laughs>